Uh, and on screen today, we have a puzzle by Janine, uh, which is rather wonderfully called Build Your Own Mondrian. Um, now, this is because if we look at the grid here, you can see there are enormous 45 cages drawn into it, which are all squares. And I think this is a, a tribute to, I mean, I'm sure you've all seen paintings like this before. Mondrian are well ahead of his time creating uh, paintings out of Sudoku cells and then colouring them in. Well, Janine's just taken this a step further by actually putting the killer Sudoku totals in. So I sincerely hope that when we solve this puzzle, we end up having to colour these in because that would be rather marvellous. Um, and I'm looking forward to trying this. This comes from our Discord server. It comes very, very highly recommended. Um, anyway, before we start that, I have a few things to mention. If you uh, followed our Kickstarter campaign and if you supported it, thank you. Uh, you should have received contact in the last day or so from the pledge manager. The pledge manager has just been um, sort of appointed to run uh, to run the delivery of the books, etc. And they will be contacting you to ask for things like which address do you want the book sent to and in what language do you want the book, things like that. So um, just keep an eye on your emails um, and you should have received contact. If you haven't, then get in touch with, um, on the Kickstarter page, there is a link to the pledge manager and you should be able to get in touch with them there. Um, our Killer Sudoku app is out. It's doing it's doing great guns. It's getting some lovely reviews. Um, do check it out if you haven't if you haven't looked at it yet. If you have any interest in Killer Sudoku at all, um, then I promise you, you will love the game. Um, and on Patreon, we've also got lots of bonus content at the moment. Mark made a bonus puzzle yesterday. We have this wonderful Sudoku hunt that's been uh, so popular from Stefan Bura and Akash Jain. Um, and it's called Tracking the Cryptid and we're still getting correct answers and I'm still going to read out the names of those of you who've solved it correctly because you deserve some plaudits. So Travis and Rachel Atelian, well done. Uh, Antoine Kwai, Laborde, Saru Pauls. Oh, Jacob Knight and his girlfriend Sophie who wrote us a lovely email about how they have to spend a lot of time apart at the moment. Um, and indeed, in the new year, they're going to be on opposite sides of the world. So what they've done is they've bought, they've both bought a copy of the Killer Sudoku app. They are going to play the puzzles in the evening together on opposite sides of the world over the phone. And this struck us as a great idea and a beautiful twist on the sort of wish you were here theme. Um, and it made us smile. So good luck to, to both of you with that. Um, and I also want to give a shout out, actually. Um, they didn't solve the Sudoku puzzle hunt, but they did write... Uh, they wrote us a really charming email, Michael and Leah Compton, who are expecting their first child soon. And I was somewhat astonished to hear that the baby apparently gets more active when one of my videos is playing. So, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's amazing. And I can tell you that baby is going to be good at Sudoku. Um, so we shall uh, we shall look out for that name in the future. And obviously, best of luck with uh, this exciting time. Um, now, what are the rules of Janine's puzzle? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So that's telling us this cage here must sum to 45, which we would have known anyway because of the next rule, which is that digits cannot repeat within a cage. So you, any, any cage of size 9 must add to 45 because it will contain all of the digits from 1 to 9. And that's what you get if you add those up. A knowledge bomb I share very often on the channel. Um, cells separated by a small circle must contain consecutive digits. Ah, so we have some... Uh, some dots in the grid that need to be consecutive and there's no negative constraint here so it's perfectly possible say for these two cells to be consecutive as well um, just because there's no white dot doesn't mean that there is not uh, a consecutive pair of digits in a domino and that's it so do have a go paint your own Mondrian and uh, with that I get to play the way you get to play is to click the link under the video the way I get to play is right now let's get cracking and see how to solve this um, my eyes are drawn immediately here. A four cage in two cells has got to be one and three. Uh, a 22 cage must contain a nine. This is five, eight, nine, or six, seven, nine. Uh, this, ah, yeah, okay, look at the bottom row. We've got two six cages in the bottom row. So we know what digits are going to go in those cages. We might not know the order, but we know that these are one, five, and two, four in some arrangement. Oh, 
Ah, okay. And actually, we can just use the we can use the rule of 45 on the bottom row because we know the whole row adds to 45 because it will contain the digits 1 to 9. But what do those cages add up to? Well, they only add up to 28, which means these two little squares have to add up to the difference between 45 and 28, which is, of course, 17. Don't put 17 in those cages, though. That won't work. Put the two digits that add up to 17, 8 and 9. Um, so these squares are 3, 6 and 7. That seems to work, doesn't it? That adds up to 16. Um, right, so now, now what do we do? Presumably somehow we have to use these enormous cages. So, I mean, we know, for example, this cage must contain a 9, and that 9 can't be, be in this 2x2 two two block here because the 9 is in those cells. So there's a 9 in one of those 5 cells, which is completely useless. So don't look at that. Um, 10 cage here has got to either be 2, 8 or 4, 6. That's also useless. Ah, we need to think harder about this. So, ah, ah, I'm just thinking here. These cells, we can work out the value of these cells because although it's not useful. Ah, but no, hang on a minute. <laughs> Hold on a minute. There is something here. Because, ah, this is really obvious. It's taken me about five minutes to spot this, but the, I'm actually going to, I'm going to make Mondrian turn in his grave here. I'm not going to color in the squares. I'm going to color in the, th the cells in the rows and columns that are not in the 45 squares. That is what I'm going to do because we know what these cells add up to. And it's really obvious the moment you focus on it, you can immediately see what they must add up to because what, you know, what does one row of the Sudoku add up to? 45. So what do three complete rows of the Sudoku add up to? Well, three lots of 45. Well, there's two lots of 45 there. So the green cells must add up to another 45. And just as interestingly, the green cells must contain, therefore, one of each of the digits from one to nine, which is very, the reason I, I mean, that's pretty obvious the moment you think that they add up to 45, but it's not necessarily obvious when you look at the Sudoku to think that that digit and that digit can't be the same. But they can't be the same, because if they were, there would be four of that digit in these three rows, which is not going to work. Now, why did I say it was useless? Well, it, the tw what I was thinking was I could use the 21 cage to my advantage here, because if I know those four cells add up to 21, then these five cells add up to 45 minus 21, which is 24, which, of course, is not a propitious total. But that's what I was thinking. Um, now, let's carry on, though, because this works for all the rows and columns that have these two 45 squares in. So those have to be... Um, that's another virtual 45 cage. This, this might be better with the 25 cage up there. We'll check that in a moment. They've got to add up to 45. These have also got to add up to 45. So we've sort of made an inverse Mondrian. And we will use our inverse Mondrian to... Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is lovely. Um, look at the red region. These cells in the red region have to sum up to 45 minus 25. So these have to add up to 20. But these are enormous down here. I mean, if this was... You can immediately see if this, if this domino is 6 and 7, 
these three on their own add up to more than 20. So there's definitely a three in one of those two cells. Um, now if this was seven, three, eight, that's 18, which would mean these have to add up to two. They'd have to be double one. You can't do that in a Sudoku. So these have to be three and six, and we are off and running. So these are three and six. That means this one is a seven. It means this has to be an eight because we, otherwise we can't keep this domino down enough. So we've got 17 now. These have to add up to three. So they have to be one and two. That fixes the three and the one. And I can see that gives us the 10 cage there. It also gives us this nine. Yeah, there's a few things going on now. We've got a one, two, three triple in row two. So this 10 cage is four and six because it can't be one, nine, two, eight, or three, seven. That fixes this 10 cage because now this can't be a four, six, 10 gauge and it can't be one, nine, or three, seven. So this is two, eight. Also, the nines are now pointing up into box three at this cell. So this is a nine. Nine now must be in one of those three cells in box two and in one of those three cells in box one. I do love the idea here because the temptation is to focus on what you see, on what you're given. These massive 45 cages make, they certainly, for the, for the first few minutes I was solving the puzzle, I was focusing on what I could put in them and I needed to focus on what, what I couldn't put in them. It's very clever setting. Um, now let's see if we can convert this into a decent solve. We can, the 12 cage here can't be four, eight anymore. That's five, seven or three, nine. The one here can't go there, look. So this can't be a five. Actually, we can. Ah, okay. So we can. We can do some maths on those four cells. That's the next thing I can see. How do we do the maths on these four cells? Well, we use the fact that we can approximately work out the value of these six cells in column nine, because this cell is restricted. These six cells. Well, what what are the possibilities? If this was a two these would have to add up to 39 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 45 minus 6 is 39 if these added up to 39 these cells would add up to 90 minus 39 um, which is 51 which is oh this is important this is broken this this cannot be a 2 let's do this longhand if this is a 2 this adds up to 39 these add up to 51, 51 and 6 is 57, these would have to add up to 33. Well, that's absolutely impossible because the maximum I could make those squares add up to is 30, and that's if I use 6, 7, 8, and 9. So 2 doesn't work here. Does, I'm not sure 4 works. No, 4 won't work either. It's not big enough. That's going to make these have to add up to 31. This has to be 5. So this is 1. These two squares are now no. Well, we know the or we know what they are. We don't know the order. That's two and four. This now, this now adds up to thirty six, which means this adds up to fifty four, which means fifty four and six is sixty. These are six, seven, eight, and nine, and we are. There's no nine. Actually, there's no look because there's a nine in one of those three. There's no nine there. And there's no nine here anymore. In fact, there's no six there because um, uh, because of the six in one of those two cells. So do we get do we get more from that or is oh there's a one two pair here that's fixing the two and the eight. Sorry, I should have spotted that before. That's fixing that this is seven nine. This is six and eight. The six and the eight. Well, we can get this square look. We've got, that's got to be a five by Sudoku. And in fact, this, 
Ah, this square is important now. Yeah, look at this. This square here can't be. Well, let's yeah, let's let's think about this. If this is this can't be six, seven, eight or nine or five. So it has to be a low digit. Now, if it's four, these two squares are a seven, nine pair. If it's three, these have to be an eight, nine pair. And that's impossible because there's an eight and a nine. Well, there's an eight in one of those two squares. So this has to be four. This has to be seven and nine, which we don't yet know the order of. These two squares have got to be three and five, which we do know the order of. And all of a sudden we're doing rather nicely. These squares here are one, two and three. Uh, this five means we know what the 22 cage is now. This has got to be six, seven and nine. That means these squares are, what's that? We need two, four and eight. We can't put two and eight in that one. That's a four. This is a two, eight pair. This four fixes the six and the four and we're flying all of a sudden. That square we can write in, that's a seven. These squares here have got to be five, six and eight. And look, there's a dot. So we, uh, we make our first use of the dot. Five, six and eight, which two are consecutive? Well, the five and the six are gonna have to go there. The eight must go here. And maybe we can, what shall we do next? Oh, we still can't get the 12 cage. We can't, sorry about this. One second, let me try and spot something we can do. The 21 cage is a little bit restricted. Yeah, hang on, look. This this can't be a 1-2 pair, because then these two squares would have to both be 9 to make 18. So this square can't be a 3, because if this square was a 3, this would be a 1-2 pair. So this gets reduced. If this is... Ah, and now there must be a 9 in this domino, because this is either 1-3 or 2-3. So it's these two squares are either adding to 16 or 17. That always has a nine in it. That gets us the nine and the seven. And now it can't be nine, seven, so it must be nine, eight, because of the seven here. That fixes the six, that fixes the eight. We know that the value of these squares is one and three, which places the two. And we can, yeah, we can use the dot here because this can't be a nine now, because it would put an eight there and clash in the column. So that's an eight, that's a nine. This can't be a nine because of the nine there, that's a seven. Ah, this, that's interesting. Two, four and five in this column, look, can't go in those squares. That's a statement of the blinking obvious, but it does mean that they have to f consume three of those four squares. Well, one thing we can say with certainty is the two, four, and five don't add up to nine, so we can't put them all in the nine cage. So this square is two, four, or five. And we can go further than that, because if this, if this square was a four, then the two and the five would go in the nine cage. And that would mean you'd have to put two twos in the nine cage along with the five, which is not gonna work. So this is not four. I suppose we can go further than that, because once this is not four, there is now a four in the nine cage. And what do we know about a nine cage and three cells that contains a four? Well, it's also going to have a two and a three in it, which fixes that this is a five. And now there's a two, three, four triple in column one, which means that's a one. This is a three. This is not three. This is a two, four pair. And now those two squares have got to be one and something. So the one can't go in the 12 gauge. That must be a five. This must be a seven. That square should be a right in, assuming I can. That must be a six, I think. Uh, yeah, we've not got a six in that column yet. So those two squares are three and nine, which we I don't think we do know the order there. And these squares are now one and six. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, they're one and six, but look, though there's already a six in this 45 cage. 
So you can't have two sixes, then that fixes those. Um, now, so we've actually done quite well here. We've used up all of the cages. And it sh well, apart from the 45 cages, obviously, and it should just be some sort of Sudoku problem now. <laughs> I realize that's not terribly helpful uh, in a video all about solving a Sudoku, but you hopefully you see what I mean. Um, so 8, look, can't go in any of those cells because there's already an 8 here. So 8 must be in this domino, which means this 8 fixes where it goes. Therefore, that's a 1. Let's get rid of the 8 pencil mark. This column is becoming a bit congested. It needs 2, 3 and 4. There's a 2 there. So this must be 2. This is a 3, 4 pair. Now that, the two things that strike me there is, look, that's got to be consecutive. So the 1 can't go here. So this has to be 3. And this square, uh, that's a bit less. Or is it? If that's a 4... If that's a 4, this would have to be 3 or 5, and it can be neither. So this is 3. This is 4. This can't be 4, so it has to be 2. That fixes the 3 and the 9. Um, the 2 fixes the 2 and the 8. This needs a 4 and a 5 into those squares. Don't think... Oh, we do know the order, because we have a 4 in this box. So the 5 and the 4 go in. This is a 6-7 pair, which again we know. 6 and 7 go in. This is a 1 and a 4, which we don't know. Oh well. It was still good though. This, These two squares are... Uh, well, we can't put a 1 there because that's going to break. So 1 goes here, 9 goes here, 8 goes here. This square should be a right in. That's a 5. That fixes the 5 and the 6, the 6 and the 3. This this virtual 45 cage is now now needs a 2 and a 7. Uh, there's probably a way of resolving that. I just can't see what it is. But the 2, 7 does resolve the 9 cage and all these cages as well. Lovely. Um, 6, 7 there plonks the 9 in this square. Which we are. Oh, actually, let's just take a step back there. I could have got this very quickly. I've just noticed by noticing this square was a 9. So if we come back to this point, it would have been cleverer, actually. I would have been proud of myself. This 9 here is in the same 45 virtual 45 cage as these two cells. So we could have just eliminated this in that way, and that would have been more elegant. No elegant points for me. Um, so that fixes those squares. These two squares now have got to be 5 and 6, which we can do. And I think we're basically done now. 3, 4, 8 and 9. So this is a 3, 9 pair, which we can fill in. That fixes the 9 and the 7. Fixes the 7 and the 2. Fixes the 2 and the 1. Fixes the 1 and the 4. Plonks a 4 up there. That should be an 8. And I think that is how to solve a very beautiful puzzle from Janine in a slightly um, unexpected way. I probably should have, you know, stuck to the idea and uh, highlighted these cells in a colour, but actually I found it more helpful to do an inverse Mondrian. And I hope you approve of that. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I always read them. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.